story is uh, based on this book, Snowstorm and End of August, by Jefferson Morley. Uh, I really encourage you to read it. There's an awful lot of history in there about uh, the early uh, days of Washington. Uh, I only have a few minutes to uh, get some of the highlights. Uh, I understand that Ralph uh, asked me to give this presentation because he somehow got the idea I was here in 1835. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it. <laughs> uh, this is the story of a black and white race riot that took place in August of 1835. Four years before, there was the Nat Turner Rebellion in which a lot of whites were killed. Uh, two years before, the uh, American Anti-Slavery uh, Society was formed in Philadelphia. Uh, earlier that summer of 1835, there had been another race riot in uh, Clinton, Mississippi. Uh, things were really heating up. It was a tense time. Uh, when some events took place, I'd like to tell you about an involved uh, Beverly Snow, um, Arthur Bowen, and Reuben Crandall. Uh, Beverly Snow uh, was a former slave uh, who was uh, given his uh, freedom in 1830. Uh, he was a, a mulatto, a well-spoken uh, man who moved uh, through uh, all kinds of circles, uh, white and black, in Lynchburg. Uh, when he uh, on his freedom in 1830, he had to leave the state of Virginia or risk being re-enslaved. The law was the same both in uh, Maryland and Virginia, and if you didn't leave the state when you were free, uh, you were uh, subject to being uh, re-enslaved. Uh, when he came to uh, uh, Washington, he had experience uh, cooking uh, in Lynchburg, and he opened a restaurant at the corner of 6th and Pennsylvania Avenue uh, called the Epicurean uh, Eating House. It was the very first restaurant in Washington that had what they called a Paris style, a Paris style uh, eating house uh, where it's tables and a set menu from which people could choose. Before that, you probably were sitting at a communal uh, table in a hotel or boarding house dining room and you took whatever uh, was was served to you. It became very, pro very uh, uh, profitable and very, very uh, well attended by, by the better folks in town. Um, at the, then in, uh, I'll move on to Arthur Bowen, who was a 19-year-old uh, slave who belonged to Anna Thornton, who was the wife of the late uh, William Thornton, who was the architect uh, of the Capitol. Um, Arthur uh, uh, lived on the third floor of uh, the Thornton home at 14th and F Street, Northwest. And 14th and F, 14th and G was Foundry, and uh, 14th and H was where Asbury started in the China Cook School. Um, Arthur uh, was not required to do very much. He liked the races. That's not if he liked anything. Uh, he attended uh, John F. Cook's school and uh, belonged to uh, John F. Cook's uh, Talking Society. And the Talking Society, probably to the white people of Washington, was kind of seditious because they spent all their time talking about freedom and demeaning things like all men are created equal. One night after a uh, meeting, uh, meeting of the Talking Society, uh, Arthur uh, and a friend went over to President's Park, now Lafayette Square, uh, with a bottle. And the two of them talked until 1 a.m. Arthur came home to uh, 14th Street, goes in the back door, see it, he's totally degraded. He sees uh, an axe there, picks the axe up, walks up to the uh, uh, second floor, uh, whether he thought it was his uh, third floor room or uh, the second floor room, we don't know. But the three women in the house, uh, uh, his mother, Marie Bowen, Anna Thornton, and Anna Thornton's mother were sleeping there. They, uh, Anna was startled, woke up, saw the act, 
ran uh, next door and told the men there that she's killed, she's killed. Well, Arthur hadn't killed anybody, and we don't know if he ever had any intention. Probably not. Uh, likely, Arthur was the illegitimate son of William Thornton. Uh, he uh, runs away at the prompting of his mother. Uh, the next morning, he comes back. The constables arrive and take him off to jail. Uh, which is, I thought, was in Judiciary Square. Um, the mob uh, uh, comes and tries to uh, get Arthur, intending to uh, lynch him. Uh, also, uh, at the same time in Georgetown, there's a man uh, there who's come from Connecticut by the name of uh, uh, Reuben Cran. Uh, Reuben was the uh, brother of Prudence uh, Campbell, a uh, noted abolitionist from Connecticut. He happened to have in his room a uh, large trunk filled with anti-slavery uh, pamphlets. He had anti-slavery newspapers on the table there. Uh, people had seen them, and when they heard about what was going on with Arthur, thinking that perhaps the slave rebellion uh, was about to start, called the constables who went to the um, uh, Crandall's room, searched them, found the pamphlets, and uh, uh, took uh, him off to jail uh, along with, uh, where Arthur was. Again, there were uh, a number of the working men of the city who convened on the, on the jail, wanting to lynch uh, both of them. In 1835, uh, the free persons of color outnumbered whites in the city. But they were in no way, uh, uh, no way equal uh, to the whites. They could open businesses, um, but they, they could not uh, vote, of course. Uh, they had to buy by 10 o'clock uh, curfew, and they could not get testimony in court against the white person. Um, this is all according to the black codes that were mentioned in the film. Um, in the midst of all of this uh, turmoil, with the mob trying to uh, grab both Reuben and Arthur and take them out to lynch them, um, rumors spread that Beverly Snow, many of these people resented because uh, probably thinking it was uppity, to use the term, uh, uh, the rumor spread that he had insulted the working men of the city, insulted their wives, and suggested that uh, he could have um, his way with them. None of these were true. This is not uh, Beverly Hall, but it served to enrage, uh, enrage the mob. Uh, they uh, go over to Beverly Snow's restaurant, they trash it entirely, drink uh, uh, liquor, and then having been denied access to uh, Reuben and Arthur, uh, they spread out through the city, uh, burning and destroying black uh, uh, businesses and black institutions, um, and uh, generally all over the city, and particularly the schools. Once uh, order was restored, the, the leaders of the riot uh, were, were put on trial um, and uh, uh, were, were convicted and, and served uh, six months in the city jail. However, once the riots were over, things would not be the same for the free blacks in the city. Uh, the black codes uh, were uh, reinforced by the city council. Um, they were no longer allowed to have business licenses, um, and other uh, strict uh, codes were added. This would go on uh, until uh, 1862, when emancipation occurred in the district, a year before it occurred uh, uh, in the South, and two years before emancipation occurred in, in Maryland. 
Now, in the course of all this, uh, Beverly Snow flees town. Uh, he ends up in Toronto, where he dies at age 52, having opened three restaurants there. Uh, at the assistance of Anna Thornton, uh, President Jackson finally uh, pardons Arthur. But as part of the deal, uh, Anna is required to sell uh, Arthur, and Arthur is taken to the docks and sent off to New Orleans, where he is expected to uh, work on, on steamboats coming out of New Orleans. Uh, Ruben Crandall is put on trial by the district attorney, uh, Francis Scott Key, uh, the Star Spangled Banner King, and, uh, uh, and he's put on, on trial for inciting rebellion and riot. And in his defense, his attorney quoted from Francis Scott Key's own arguments in favor of uh, uh, colonization uh, in Liberia. So uh, he was uh, actually uh, found not, not guilty and went back home to Connecticut. Uh, John F. Cook was Pennsylvania. He came back a year later and opened uh, uh, the, uh, uh, opened a school for uh, uh, children of color. Uh, and the uh, school grounds uh, became the home of the first Asbury Church. Uh, for about six months until until the uh, church was built. Uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, it's a very tumultuous time in 1835. And if you get a chance to read the book, you can see uh, history of which uh, of that time and in vivid detail. I urge you to uh, go ahead and, uh, if you have a chance, uh, take a look at the book. Thank you.